This is a bare bones Controlum 70 desktop tutorial. So what we're going to go ahead and do is log into Control M Desktop 70. Uh, you do that by normally clicking on the orange desktop item, or if you are in the GUI already signed in in EM, you can click on the orange icon here, which will bring up Control M Desktop as your current login. <clears throat> so we're just going to go ahead and log in like we were not in the GUI. This is the Control Room Desktop GUI. Now in this we're just going to go over a couple basic jobs and uh, command. So both a job type of job and a command type of job. Uh, most people will be working with an existing table. So if you're working with an existing table, you're going to go up here to File and Load Jobs from Control M E M. So what that's going to do, that's going to go out to the server in any defined via desktop jobs that have that are sitting out there will be listed here. So I'm going to go and pull in one of my tables. Again, this is just a standard table, not a smart table type jobs, which we'll cover at some other point in time. <clears throat> now here, my full table name, if I switch the view over here to the hierarchical data, you'll actually see the full table name, which is just Josh and then you will see each of the jobs listed. Okay, now this isn't the way it looks in EM Enterprise Manager by default. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the application hierarchical view, which will just show me how I would see it in EM, which is Josh testing as the application, and then my various groups that I have here. Okay, as you can see, I got several different types of jobs here. I got reporting jobs, Windows jobs, Linux jobs, and general control and system jobs that uh, that I use. Now, if I just want to add a job to any one of these tables and the job already exists, the best thing to do is to, of course, use a job that's already existing. That's of the same type, and then I would right-click and do a copy and edit and change any variables that I want. This way, a lot of companies like ours has have uh, uh, resources that are required to be put on the jobs. So you would already have all these, you'd already have all your basic callout information included. However, if I wanted to create a new job, I go right here to this new job icon. Sorry about that. And you instantly get an error because this is a multiple control M data center. Seeing that your control M data center isn't, de um, <coughs> isn't defined, sorry. So what I would do is I would go ahead and pick the data center that I'm going to define the job in, which in this case is our test QA data center. Uh, this is just letting me know that if I have in anything in here, it would all be lost. So we don't care about that because it's a brand new job. I would name the job to the naming standards uh, that, that's set by the company. In this case, it's uh, our, our table name by default, but we have other standards as well. So I'm going to go ahead and Josh underscore and then whatever I want this to be. Now you notice here in task type I can select the type of job. Uh, the two most popular are job or command. Okay and these are all OS type jobs so they're meant to be run on a Linux or a Windows server depending on on which node you're using. Uh, there are other options but we'll go over those in detail later. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and do a job which means I'm running a script on some server somewhere. Uh, the asterisk indicates all the required fields. So if this was a Windows job, you would put in the path name. Okay, and you don't have to put in the uh, final forward slash there. It's going to automatically put that in for you. Um, some systems will error out if you have it twice. Others ignore it depending on one type, what type. And then you would put in the executable in this case since I'm gonna say this is a Windows job. So I'm gonna call this win test dot bat. Okay. So I have my file name that it's gonna run. That could be an exe or any other type of file, a sh file if we're on a Unix system. I got my file path. I'm gonna call this job test 101. Like I said, all the asterisks are required, so I'm going to pick my table name. Now I want this to be the same as the rest of my jobs. 
and we're gonna call this a wind job. Now if I wanted a different group, if I wanted this like wind jobs 101, I could go ahead and add that here and then this job would go into a new group called wind jobs 101. We're going to keep it the same. Uh, owner is the ID on the device that the job must run under. So in this case it would be my ID that the job runs under under the server. Um, a lot of times it would be a control M ID or a, a various user ID. And the author is me as well, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, here we use URLs for our documents. So I'm going to check the URL, but if I was using a different uh, document application, I would put in the doc path or whatever's needed. A short description of the job. We'll just say this is. And a lot of this is just basic information you need. So all the required information is filled out plus some non-required information. Jump over to the scheduling tab here. If we were uh, using a calendar, we could select from the available calendars or we could schedule the days directly. So this job I'm going to say runs every Sunday of all months. And I'm going to go ahead and use this down here, which is the active from. I'm going to say we don't want this job to start running until July 12th. And we're only going to run it until the 19th. If I leave this blank, then it's going to be able to run anytime the table comes in that it meets these conditions. Okay, the execution tab here, the basic information that all jobs need, is the node ID that they're going to run under or this would be the uh, node ID is also the server name, the agent. Okay, uh, We're not going to do cyclic job now, we're just going to say it's a standard one-time run job. We're going to give it a priority of AA. <coughs> uh, capital letters start your highest priority, so if it's a priority AA that would be uh, the highest priority that you can have. Uh, uh, lower AA means anything from capital AA to uh, capital ZZ would run before it, or at least at a higher priority. Uh, and any combination, capital A, B would run, lower B would run before, or I'm sorry, after capital A, A. You can also check the job as critical if it's a critical job, which gives it an extra priority over the A, A. You can do the submit time. So we're going to say this job runs at 7 a.m and it must complete by 8 a.m., which means if any conditions we set are not satisfied uh, by 8 a.m., this job will not be able to run. If we were in a time zone and we didn't want to use the default system one, we could select a time zone from here. Uh, currently, in, uh, here we only operate under the standard time or the system time zone which is Eastern Standard or Eastern Daylight Time so we don't have to select it but if we wanted to, to only operate in Eastern Standard Time we would select Eastern Standard and we would ignore the Daylight Time change. Okay, uh, Max weight is if this job would run across multiple days we'll go over that in more detail in a later video. Okay, Conditions are any in or out conditions that this job may have. Um, dependencies is another way to say that. Uh, and normally what we do is we do, I'm sorry, as the out condition, if this job is going to trigger others, we do percent percent job name, which will pull in the job name. You have to do a period and then underscore OK. The period does not actually show up in the condition, but what it'll do is it'll put in the job name and that period becomes a uh, just an indicator to tell the system that this is a variable and then it'll add the OK onto it. So in this case the condition would look like this when it is actually submitted. So there would be no space and there would be no period and it would just resolve itself as that for the system. Uh, since this is going to be the first job in the stream we won't put an in condition but if we wanted to uh, 
make an in condition, say another job, jo Josh test 100 must complete OK for this job to run. We could put that in there, and that would mean that that condition needs to be satisfied before this job would be able to run. Sorry about that. Uh, we use quantitative resources. So here there are three that we require. We require uh, a BMC quantitative system resource. We require our application resource, which in my case is Josh. And we require our uh, group resource, which uh, here is a media or consumer group. In this case, I'm going to call it media. Control resources would be any system resources, uh, like a server must, a specific server must be available. Um, something outside uh, it can be uh, other jobs from different data centers can post into that. I will cover that more later. Our set tab would be any auto variables that we would want to fill in. Um, so like if we needed something after the bat to add to it, we would do a command and we could put that variable in. Or if we wanted to make our own variable like percent percent job name, we could put that variable in as well. We'll go over that in more details later. Uh, steps, we will also go to more details later and post proc here this is the shouts to the system uh, most of the time here at this company we use it for not okay and we would shout to EM or in our case it's uh, ECS and we would shout out the basic information of the job normally using variables um, And what that would do, that would shout to the console of whomever is monitoring EM, our operations group, and then they would be able to follow any the documentation that you link here for that job. Okay, if we hit save and close, we will see that that job appears in our list. And then to actually get that job onto EM uh, from desktop, you must do a write. Okay, and here it would tell you if you're replacing or changing a lot of jobs. It would let you know that, hey, there's uh, 33 jobs here. Now you're only uploading one. Are you sure? It would give you a confirmation. And then you must also upload that table. So here we're going to filter to see only the modified. And we will go over this stuff in more detail, too. We can go ahead and upload that table. Here it'll tell us once it's complete that that table is uploaded. Now since this table is set to system, uh, we use multiple user dailies, but on our test environment we only use the user daily system normally. Uh, every day at our new day, which is scheduled at midnight Eastern Time, uh, any jobs that are scheduled will come in for that time. If the jobs are not scheduled, like this one here, if it was a, a Monday, this job would not come in. Okay, but if it was a Sunday, then the job would come in. And that is your bare basic Controlum desktop how-to. You can uh, save the file as a draft in an XML format or in this case, because we keep it on the server, we don't actually save it. Thank you.